Hi, I'm Todd Branch. I'm going to be showing you some of the things that you'll be seeing on Disc TV that you might not understand. For example, uh, marking the lie. Uh, with me today is my friend and co Winnie crew member, Dave Feldberg. He's going to be doing the demonstrating for us. Okay. Go ahead and plop a disc down. Well, first the disc. Um, when, uh, after Dave throws a shot and it lands in this particular spot, he's probably going to want to reuse that disc. So what he's going to do is mark it with a mini. Mini? Which is, he's going to place it directly between the disc and the basket, as close to the disc as he can. Now, for his next shot, he can pick up his disc. And for his next shot, he has to keep his foot directly behind the mini, in line with the basket. You'll be seeing people do this all the time. They'll get their foot down. Go ahead, Dave. Right behind the mini. Now, you have 11 inches. It's 30 centimeters exactly behind it. So I could, if you wanted to, I could be here, but directly in a line from the pole through the mini. So now I'm in my stance. And the rule is that I can't go past it. My foot has to stay planted in this spot behind it. So as I throw, I have to stay, I have to wait for it to come to a rest in the basket. Then I can bend down and pick up my mini. And now it's a good putt. Right, in some instances, Dave will be behind an obstacle and he'll place his mini down and he won't want to go putt from directly behind the mini. He's going to have to do what we call a straddle putt and move out to the side. Now on the straddle putt, you go ahead and you place one foot directly behind the mini in line like you're supposed to and you can take the other foot and take it out perpendicular to the line of the basket. So if this is the line, you get a 90 degree angle and your other foot can't go past that angle. It has to stay behind it. So that, that gives me the advantage so I don't have the trees in my way. Now I can step around it and it's a wide open putt. Great. Now, sometimes you'll see people hopping over their mini. Now if you're more than 10 meters away from the basket, you're allowed to do what's called a falling putt, which means that after you release your disc, you're allowed to go past the mini. Let me show you. Dave will show you here. He's, he's marking off about 11 steps, which is approximately 10 meters. On some courses, they'll have the 10 meter line marked. For most purposes, we have to uh, estimate it ourselves. It's approximately Which, 30 feet here, 33. What you can do is you line up, and it's not a jump and then putt. It's, it's a putt and it's a putt and then jump, but just to carry momentum, so you can get more momentum on the frisbee. It'll carry your momentum. Excuse me. It'll carry your momentum along so that you don't have to throw it quite so hard. You can pretty much use your normal putt, but it gets a little more force behind it. Let me try another one. You can also do this in the straddle position he was talking about. You just step out. Make. So as, as long as the player is outside of 10 meters, he is allowed to step past his mini. Now uh, there's other situations that can become involved. Okay, in this particular situation, the disc is right up against the tree. So Dave will come down and mark it. With my mini. And. Uh, as you can see, he doesn't really have room to get his foot behind there. Let's give it a try. Show him. You can't do it. Uh, too hard. No. So what he can do is he can go directly away from the basket as close to the original lie as he can. Go ahead. So I'll put it right behind the lie. And this is when I, I will straddle again. Even though I'm more than the 30 centimeters from behind the mini, I'm not capable of putting my foot inside the tree. So I, the rule is you just take it no closer to the basket on the same line. You straddle it in. Now, in some cases, the disc will come to rest up underneath of something such as it is right here. Now, in this situation, Dave will mark the spot. With mini. Always got to mark it with the mini. And here we use the uh, what's known as the rule of verticality, which means that he can play above the playing surface behind his mark if it's necessary. So in, in this case, he's allowed to stand on top of the log. So I'm going to go above the log, make sure it's safe because you want to hurt yourself out there. All right, in this case right here, Dave's going to mark his lie. 
Now, most people when they putt prefer to have their weight on their right foot. So, Dave is going to take his legal 30 centimeters behind the mark. The reason, then, the reason for this is, is because if I'm standing like this comfortably, it, I'm, I'm past the mark. It can't be past the line. It's a circle, but it's about right here, and my toe would be past it, and that's kind of foot fault. So what I will do is take my 30 centimeters I'm allowed by using my shoe, which I've measured to about right here. I'll make my mark in the ground. Then I'll stick my toe on that mark where I'm legal, and now I can lean forward with my right foot. I don't have to worry about being past the mark or cheating. So then I just take it and straddle putt it in. Now sometimes a player will commit what's known as a foot fault, which is when he breaks one of these rules. If that were to happen, then the other players in his group would be responsible to call him on a foot fault. In the first time he does this, he would have to reshoot the shot. Let me demonstrate. Here's what's commonly known as a foot fault. All right, Dave's foot was too far forward, his right foot. So the other players in his group, if they're paying attention, would call a foot fault, and Dave would have to re-throw that shot. Okay, so let me redo it. Now I've already been warned once, so now I'm redoing it. Okay, sometimes during a tournament, uh, a player will commit a foot fault, such as Dave will demonstrate here. In this case, Dave's right foot is too far forward. So as a member of his group, I will call a foot fault, and another member of the group will have to second that call. In this case, Dave gets warned about the foot fault, which means that without penalty, he can come back and re-throw the shot. I'll give it another try. Now this time, Dave stepped past his mini when he was within 10 meters, so that would be a second foot fault. He's already been warned, so this time he would receive a one-stroke penalty for the second offense. So, thus far we've covered foot faults, which can include lining up wrong, or stepping past your lie within 10 meters. We've covered the rule of verticality, which allows you to play above your lie if there's an obstacle in the way. We've covered the rule of uh, playing within the same line if you're up against the tree and you can play behind it. We've covered a little bit of jump putting, which is sort of hopping past your lie when you're outside the 10 meter line. And uh, we've covered warnings and strokes for such violations. Each week here on Disc TV, we'll be covering the rules and technique of the game. And uh, we invite you to join along with us. Thanks for helping me out with this, Dave. Yep. And we'll see you next week out in the fairways. And until then, happy flights. <laughs>